Hello Aquarius friends, I'm Annie Botticelli and welcome to my Aquarius August 2024 astrology horoscope forecast. Well, just going to stay it right from the beginning. You've got a rare blue moon, which is the second blue moon in a row, which is even more rare. Super moon to boot in your sign this month. So that's going to be one of the big features. However, we have lots of other things to talk about, including the beginning of eclipse season where crazy life changes can happen out of nowhere and your whole trajectory of your experience can shift in dramatic ways. So yeah, that's a little something we need to discuss, right? So even though those eclipses aren't until September and October, eclipse season starts four to six weeks before the first eclipse, which is September 17th. So August is full, open, ready for these changes and more news and information moving us along the continuum of the Aries Libra eclipse cycle. Plus we've got a Pisces Virgo eclipse cycle starting. The both are going on at once. It's very intense. And besides that, we have more mundane, more daily, you know, just kind of more normal, lighter um, energies that we have to discuss to give you a good picture of what this month is like and how you can make the most of it and how you can align your rhythm with the natural rhythms of the universe. So we're going to take it all um, and I will build up to the big events, talk about the more mundane things first. Those of you who like the visuals, I'll put those at the end. This is for you if Aquarius is your sun sign, your moon sign, your rising sign, or any other Aquarius placement you're listening for. What I'm going to talk about here is part of your astrological picture. And if you're a very late degree Aquarius friend, like birthday is February 15th or so through the rest of the sign, I suggest you additionally listen to my Pisces report because you very late degree friends will benefit from both readings. Okay, so let's just take some things layer by layer. We've got a very feisty, fiery Leo time. This means there are ample opportunities for self-expression, for drama, for better or worse. If you are in acting or want to be in acting or the you know, th those kind of arts, the, the drama arts. This is an amazing time for those type of things. Anything that puts you out in front of people where you're a leader, you're looking, you know, people are looking at you, you're showing your wares, you're expressing yourself. This is a beautiful time for that. Leo also rules everything in creativity from the conception of an idea or the conception of a baby, the ultimate creative project, right? Through the manifestation. And also it precedes that to the inspiration. So the inspiration for the creative project or the romance that was behind the conception of the baby and onward. So this energy is very romantic. It's very sizzling. It's very exciting. It's very new. It's very vibrant. And it's highlighting Aquarius's seventh house of relationships. So hopefully it's going to bring zest and excitement and newness to your relationship space. And in some cases it may be re-bringing newness back into your life because we do have mercury retrograde this whole month so anything new anything that's refreshing may have a tilt to the past august 4th through august 28th we're right in mercury retrograde july 17th started our descent into the retrograde and then after august 28th we build back up into clear moving mercury from um up to um, September 12th. Okay, so we've got like that process of building back up to clarity until September 12th. So basically the whole month is covered in retrograde. If you know my work, you know what that means. If you don't, I will give you some clues here. Big, biggest advice for this month is stay on the shore and let things, the tide bring things to you, okay? When it's not retrograde time, it's a time to push your boats afloat because the tide's going out and you wanna take advantage of that. When the tide's coming in, anything you try to push out will come back to you anyway. So you're better off saving the frustration, hanging out on the beach, and waiting to see what comes to you. Now, this is a figurative term, although you could be literally on a beach, but figuratively, you're basically hanging out in your life, not trying to conjure too much, not trying to force anything, not trying to do your big launches or make these big things happen. Some big things may happen, and that's fine, but for your will, Aligning your will where you see what comes to you and you deal with the squeaky wheels, that's the best way to navigate through this time. I also liken this to being the spider in the web. You've already woven your webs all over the place. Now you sit back and you wait for the food to come to you. Okay, so see what food comes to you, see what rolls up on the shore, and you'll be much better off than trying to conjure or go nuts with things. There is going to be a strong tilt from the past because of the retrograde. So blast from the past, people, experiences, places from the past, ideas and inspiration from the past. Like I said, in your relationship space, it could be stuff from coming from the past. So it could be problems that have been swept under the rug that guess what? They're here in the same old crap again. Also, at the same time, there's the potential for good stuff from the past. Let's say you and your 
partner used to like to go to this place or do these certain things, it may be a time to go back there to remember the feelings you had when things weren't as complicated or to bring back something in like playing golf together or whatever it is that you like to do, um, you know, back in as something that you do or even just date night, things like that coming from the past. You can also have contacts from the past help you tremendously. If you need help with something this month, your seventh house is absolutely flooded with possibilities for support. If you need a plumber, if you need a lawn person, if you need an accountant, if you need a healing guide, anything that you need as far as other people can come into you very, very quickly and very perfectly at this time. And you may show up to help other people. If you have clients, this also is your house of clients. So you may find you have a ton of clients. Now, for those of you who have businesses or who are engaged in work that has to do with um, customer service or interacting with clients, trying to expand your business by doing things you did before or going to your contacts from the past may be more than trying to market to new people at this time. You know, um, trust your flow. But like the big new brigade of launching the new thing and all of that doesn't really match as much for this month if you're doing it from your perspective, okay? So something new may come to you, like I said, because we've got short-term energies here with this um, retrograde. We've got long-term energy starting to brew with the eclipses. But from what you're doing, if you just kind of keep it short, keep it light, keep it unscheduled, that's going to be your best bet. Now, as the planets move on from Leo into Virgo, and actually Mercury in Virgo will go retrograde back into Leo, so we've got a little bit of cross movement here, your second house of partnerships is being accentuated. So as the month goes on, we've got the Scorpio house, the deep relationships, the money relationships, the financial relationships, the inheritances, you and the government, you and the IRS, you know, all of that stuff, you and any government entity, and you and the universe, you and your deep psychological space, all of that deep merging, whether it's financial or spiritual, as the month progresses, those energies are being highlighted for Aquarius. And as the month progresses, the Virgo energies are going to bring more discipline, more organization, more readiness to get back to your routine. So as the month starts, it's very much play and express and, you know, all of the, the energies that Leo brings. And then as the month goes on, it's very much back to work, back to school, back to the schedule, back to the routine. But you may have a new vibrance, a new refreshed way of looking at things, a new schedule. And this is actually a really great time to experiment. So if you have to make a decision, do I make a year gym commitment now or do I try it for a month? It may be better to try it for a month because the energies are ruling short term. And there may be the perfect gym opportunity that's coming for you soon. And if you do like a short term thing, then you'll be ready to jump on the longer term thing when it comes. So just kind of things, things like that. And speaking of which, Virgo does rule health and healing of your physical body and managing stress. All of those things may be coming up for you in a very big way as the Virgo planets are being highlighted. This can also have to do with um, pets, animals, um, anything else with your workspace, your office space, all of those things are being strongly highlighted. We still have Mars in Gemini for the whole month. And as Mars moves through Gemini, it's going to bring life and light to your Leo house. So the energies of the sun and Venus and then Mercury retrograde into Leo are not the only energies in Leo you will feel. As an Aquarius, you have an extra line of energy here with Mars moving through fellow air sign, making beautiful trines for your placement in your house of true love and romance and children and creativity and self-expression. So you've got all of this luster going on, all of this expansion going on, and that's happening all month. So that's exciting. And as I've mentioned before, which is very exciting enough to mention again, you also have Jupiter and Gemini now for a whole year. So from May, 2024 through June, 2025, You've got expansion of that space of your bucket list, of your creativity, of your fun, of your children, of your romance, your romantic partner. And this makes you very, very, very um, magnetic to love and your true love or coaxing the best version of your relationship out. Okay, so all of that is happening at this time. Okay, so... We're building up to the blue moon in your sign. Um, we also have eclipses to talk about. The eclipse, the first eclipse is October 7th or um, September 17th. That's 25 degrees of Pisces. 
We've got October 2nd, the solar eclipse at 10 degrees of Libra. Eclipse season starts four to six weeks, sometimes more before that first date, which is September 17th, which is why we're talking about the eclipses now, because eclipse changes are going to be happening in August, even though the eclipse hasn't happened yet. It's a crazy thing, but it's true. From the astrological perspective, eclipses are more than just the moments that the eclipse is actually happening. So what does it mean? From early 2023 until through the first half of 2025, we've got Aries Libra eclipse cycle. This is in a favorable angle for Aquarius placements. This is bringing me versus we into the picture in a very big way, yourself, your autonomy, your independence versus your relationships, your interdependence, your codependence in some cases, and the push and pull between managing your own affairs and merging with other people. So you'll have more opportunities. August, September, October, relationships are going to come up front and center. It's not just this Leo energy that's highlighting your seventh house, although that's one layer. There are many, many layers of this relationship space that are being highlighted for Aquarius at this time. So you may have to uncover deep issues and get the chance to resolve them. You may see the fruits of labor that you've done before on your relationship space blooming and blossoming wonderfully. All of that can happen. Now with the Pisces Virgo eclipse cycle, you have new themes being introduced and these themes that are being introduced in August are going to follow you into 2027. Okay. So that's how long the Pisces Virgo eclipse cycle is. So it's very big deal. What are some of the things that can come up from the sign perspective? We've got chaos versus order. We have spirituality versus practicality. We have everything having to do with your inner world versus your outer world. So you will see these themes coming up strongly, your daily experience and your dream time space, your waking time and your dream time space. All of those things are going to be brought up in a big way. Now, specifically for Aquarius, the Pisces Virgo eclipse cycle is going to highlight your money sectors. So radical financial transformation taking place over the next several years. This can come in big, crazy events. This can come in slow perspective changes that bring steady change over time, but change will happen. And that is what is going on. Your individual finances, your second house, your money sector, where you also have Saturn moving long-term, where you also have had Neptune moving long-term, where transiting North Node is moving long-term. All of this is happening. And now we add the Pisces eclipse. So this is, um, you know, a very, very, very big deal. And this can bring profound radical trajectory shifts in your financial world. This can have to do with your earned money, inheritances, winnings, lotto sweepstakes, lawsuits, money coming to you through investments, you investing money. All of these energies are being very strongly highlighted August, September, October, opening up themes to come for the long term as well. Okay, so now let's get into, um, let's see. Okay, so once a couple of other things to talk about with the eclipses. One thing is that eclipses have are on the ecliptic and anything moving along the ecliptic has to do with our karmic experience. So negative karma, positive karma versus our highest expression in this lifetime. So old patterns versus your highest expression in this lifetime. So you can clear out lifetimes worth of karma in a short amount of time. And this karma may come in the space of relationships of entanglement with other people's money, toxic money, you and your autonomy financially, um, you know, anything having to do with your financial world, your financial viewpoints, your self-esteem and confidence versus with earning money, management of money, and your, your income versus other people's money. Um, yeah basically money. <laughs> and But it's not just money. It's also inner riches and inner resources. This can be psychological resources. This can be spiritual resources. This can be earth, you know, um, eco resources. Your use of resources is going to be transforming. The way that you see resources is going to be transforming. So there's a deep relationship going on and change happening with how you perceive resources and how you utilize them. So that's one of the bigger pictures at play. You will feel like you have your finger stuck in an electric socket for many months at a time. 
it's exhilarating, it's exciting. Sometimes it can feel like there's impending doom because when we know change is coming and we don't know what it is, sometimes we assume it's gonna be the worst. And sometimes it's terrible, but sometimes it's wonderful and sometimes it's both. So just be kind of ready for a wild ride, hold on to your hat because this change is coming. So now let's talk about this blue moon um, double blue moon, I'm calling it because it's the second blue moon in a row in your sign. So blue moons are rare. Blue moons have different definitions, which is why we have two in a row. One definition of a blue moon is the second full moon in a sign. Another is a second full moon in a calendar month. And the third is a seasonal blue moon, which is an astronomical definition, which is the third of four blue moons that occur between summer solstice and the fall equinox. Okay, so this is the one that's happening in August, August 19th, 27 degree of Aquarius, blue moon, full moon, super moon, which means that it is going to look bigger, it is closer to the earth, and it will have more of a gravitational pull and effect on our emotions, and even objective, somewhat detached sometimes, Aquarius air mental energy, when you combine a super moon and a blue moon and a full moon and all this stuff, it's very likely going to be emotional. But the emotions don't have to be bad. They can be amazing. Something coming to fruition, something being accomplished, something coming your way, you know, something being put in your lap. Um, exciting news, exciting transformation, elucidation of something that had been hidden all in the days around August 19th. You'll likely feel this one at least a week before. So you might have trouble sleeping August 12th through August 26th, the closer to the 19th. You know, this is, this is a big one. And if you look in the sky, you'll see the moon is looking like it's closer to, it'll be bigger. It'll make for great photography. So this fullness, completion, fruition, drama, possibly for better or worse, can come in the energy of Aquarius. Groups, you as a member of a group, teams, organizations, anything having to do with friendships or social um, experiences. Um, social media can also be there. Internet-based projects, technology, anything having to do with patents or futuristic types of things. Those can be what's coming to fruition in a very big way. And it is once in a blue moon. So there could be something very, very unique and special about this time. And even though it is in a retrograde, or maybe even especially because it's in a retrograde, work from your past can be showing up in a really big way now. So, you know, there is this tilt to the past with the shadow, of, you know, with this, like this cloak of the retrograde happening all month. Um, so you may notice that, you know, things, hard work may be rewarded now, things that haven't been dealt with may come up to be dealt with now, um, you know, and something coming to culmination that has taken a while can happen in this once in a blue moon. So th it being a second blue moon, because the July blue moon was the second Capricorn full moon in a row, and now we've got this blue moon, there's a lot of new, fresh, rare, unique energy happening, even though we're in the midst of the retrograde. So again, it might also be having this retrograde energy. So things worked on in the past are very strongly featured at this time. So all of you can feel the goodies um, from this full moon. All of this can also be used for, I like to call reveal and re release ceremonies. So if you have something blocking you in any, in, on any level in any way, you can ask for the causes, the root causes, to be revealed and released at this time. This is a powerful time for ritual or for ceremony or for prayer or for meditation where you can have deeply rooted insights come into your consciousness in amazing and expanding ways and amplified ways. So like I said, all of you will can feel this, you will be feeling this. Um, if you are closer to 27 degrees, so these are late degree friends, so 22 degrees through the rest of the sign, the closer to 27 degrees. So that's going to be like February 12th through the rest of the sign and the closer to around the 17th, 18th, 19th, the more you'll be feeling this rare event and having the energy from it. Now, one other thing to discuss about this blue moon, super moon, full moon, is that it is happening in the Aquarius first house. Um, if you're interested in visuals, I will be showing you the visuals soon, but, um, and you can see what this first house looks like if you're, if you're interested in that later, but the first house has to do with your physical body. It has to do with your identity. It has to do with your ground foundational, um, experiences. So the things that happened around your birth, your childbirth, your, your very young times, foundational experiences that may be echoing out now. This energy is the baby of the zodiac. So it can be 
very much a rebirth, very much a renewal coming up. And this can also have to do with, like I said, your identity, how you see yourself, how you want to put yourself out in the world. This can be a fantastic time to take pictures. Um, if you need something to redefine your, your look. Now, when I say that, this isn't the best time to get a permanent something happening because of the retrogrades. You know, a henna tattoo would be better than a real one at this time. Um, you know, doing different things with your hair rather than doing something permanent, experimenting would be better, okay? Because the time now, it just doesn't lend itself to making permanent decisions, but like experimenting with things or making the types of um, inner decisions, you could call it, of something to come. Like, let's say you're an engineer and you really want to be a musician. You can make that inner decision that you're going to make more time for your art, you know, your craft, your whatever it is. Um, and this is a really good time for that, for those big internal decisions that will continue to evolve. Um, but it has to do very much with your identity and who you are and why you came here, linked to this karmic energy of your highest expression in this lifetime and how you can clear out the gunk that's in the way of your highest expression in this, this lifetime and show up with your best and greatest. Okay, so I, if you want to have more dates that are noteworthy, I gave you quite a few, but if you want to see my favorite aspects of the month, the ones to be most watchful of that are dicey, um, we do have a lot of um, nuisance aspects this month, go to AnnieHelpsYou.com. Um, if you're going to wait on to see the visuals that I'm going to show, I'll just run through everything that I talked about and show you on the chart. But if you're going to sign off now, I'm going, I'm kind of saying goodbye to you all now and giving you some info, but if you want to see the visuals, then hang on with me. So go to AnnieHelpsYou.com, put your name and email address in, click receive, get my welcome letter into the inbox, click on the archive link and put in August 2024 astrology. And that's going to lead you to my free VIP community write up with all of the notable dates for this month, plus other things um, on the topics that I talked about. And you'll be able to get more information basically weekly, including astrology lessons and things like that there. So if you're not staying on for the visuals, then I will see you next month. Um, if you're staying on for the visuals, I'll drop those in now. Okay, so I'm just going to show you the visuals what if, um, of the things that I talked about, if you're interested in that. So we see here, your seventh house is very much accentuated with all this Leo energy. Mercury will go retrograde back into Leo and accentuate that seventh house, things from the past, relationships coming up very strongly, opportunities to get the help that you need and to show up for other people. If you're in a business or have customers or clients, this can expand your client base tremendously and bring all of that into front and center. As Venus and the sun move on, they will highlight your eighth house. This eighth house is also one of the pair that's being highlighted by the Pisces um, Virgo eclipse cycle from now until 2027. So, um, you know, other people's money, sweepstakes, winnings, government money, spousal money, family money, inheritances, versus your individual money, which is where this eclipse is going to be. So money shuffling around, your money versus other people's money, um, things are changing in that arena. The blue moon eclipse, not eclipse, I'm sorry, the blue, the second blue moon, full moon, super moon at 27 degrees of Aquarius is here in your first house, accentuating all of that new baby of the zodiac energy, Mars and Jupiter highlighting that fifth house, which is ruled by Leo. Fun, frolic, children, romance, all of that happening there. I'm giving you a lot of dates, but if you want more, my favorite dates of the month, we've got so many nuisance aspects this month. <laughs> you can see the dates for those and what to expect about those, plus some other things to look out for. Go to AnnieHelpsYou.com, put your name and email address, click receive, Go into the inbox. Hopefully it's there. If it's not, it might be in spam or social or whatever. You have to move it into the inbox. Click on the um, archive link and put in August 2024 astrology. And then you'll get my whole write-up of August 2024, including the sweet and salty dates, all kinds of information to make the most of this month. I also have a double blue moon promo going on, a crazy promo. So at AnnieHelpsYou.com, scroll down to up level. My Becoming a Professional Astrologer Mastery Course, when you register for this one course, 
you get all of the other courses in my whole school for free um, through the end of August. I think August 28th is the day that that um, expires. So you can check that out at AnnieHelpsYou.com. And then you can go to up level or you can go straight to www.theastropro.com to see that course and all the goodies. I hope you have a wonderful month and I'll see you next month. Bye.